Hi, my name is Dr. Jocelyn Lippi. I'm a breast surgeon from Melbourne. And thanks so much for listening to uh, my recorded talk. Um, this talk has come from the BREAKS project, which is transforming breast cancer screening with artificial intelligence, which is a cross collaborational study with the institutions you can see uh, on the right hand side there. Um, we're quite a big team and our portion of the project is looking at what do clinicians and clients think about the use of artificial intelligence for breast cancer screening. And today I'm just talking about what we found uh, the clinicians who work in breast cancer screening think of this. Um, so using artificial intelligence for radiological interpretation um, has been a very rapidly evolving field over the last few years. And mammography is really ripe for the picking because of the two view imaging and the large data sets available for development, testing and validation. This seems like the perfect environment to be using artificial intelligence. Um, were the existing literature about acceptability has a huge variation depending on where the literature comes from. Different cultures and different countries appear to have very different opinions. Um, and obviously we need to have radiologists and the clinicians currently involved in these big programs. Uh, we need their support and their understanding in order for it to be implemented successfully. The aim of this part of the project was to assess what do clinicians who are currently involved in breast screening in Victoria understand and think about artificial intelligence and what will we need uh, to gain their support in this area. We approach this using qualitative methodology um, with a grounded theory approach. And we ran focus groups recruiting clinical staff from Breast Screen Victoria assessment sites. So they're the areas that women go to when they've found to have an abnormality on their screening mammogram, which is typically done in the community. The discussion guide of the focus group started with what did they generally think of artificial intelligence? What experience they'd had with artificial intelligence to date, specifically at work? What did they think the future role of using artificial intelligence in screening would be? And what did they think that the clients who currently use Breast Screen Victoria would think about this approach? And finally, we touched on what the ethical, legal and um, social concerns would be. We assessed this using a thematic approach to analysis by co-coding and discussion of, discussion of themes between uh, two investigators. <clears throat> we ran five focus groups and two one-on-one -on -one interviews with 27 participants in total. Uh, it was done just over a year ago when there were still um, active COVID restrictions in Melbourne. So this was all done via Zoom. There was um, the spread of professions you can see there. So the majority were radiologists, closely followed by the radiographers or uh, mammographers or sonographers. Interestingly, we didn't have any specific sonographers. They were all um, mammographers. And there was an even spread of the amount of time they'd been working within breast screen. Um, and you can see even though there's a spread there of the percentage of their working time they spent in breast, then almost half of them spent 100% of their time with breast. So these were very experienced breast staff. There were five broad themes I'm going to briefly talk about. The first was this paradox between the resounding optimism of the concept of artificial intelligence, but disappointment with what they'd been using to date. There was a high level of reporting that there was this feeling that there's a power between a, in a, the synergy that can potentially exist between human and machines. There were concerns raised about accountability and responsibility. Uh, there were some reservations and scepticisms and we'll go through those as well as issues about inclusion. So the first theme I'm going to talk about is this paradox that we heard about optimism and disappointment with prior experience. So there was, when we asked about initial impressions of artificial intelligence, quite a lot of excitement about the potential that it could have in this space. So a quote, and I'll give quotes for all of these themes that I'm talking about. So the quote here is, it's basically a part of technological evolution and we have to keep up with it. Again, if we're at the forefront of, of it, we can set it up for opportunity and at the hands of it, we can make the job better. I think it has a lot of promise and particularly in helping us with workflow in the future. If we get it right, it'll make our life as radiologists easier in the screening reading environment, hopefully freeing up more time for us to devote to actual client, clinical time with clients. 
But then when they started talking about how they'd been involved with artificial intelligence programs in their working life already, there was a lot of frustration about the programs that they use being underperforming. Um, and this is a quote from that. So maybe there's some opportunity there. Maybe it will get better. But at the moment, I still rely on my skills to make the diagnosis with every single case that I deal with. And I literally would go and check and go, hold on, what have they identified that I have not seen? Oh, okay, it's that thing there. That's a PAE. And that's very rare that I haven't seen that. Or I would say, hold on, I disagree with the AI and think it's a false positive, And I'm going to stick to my guns. And I would say what I think is correct. Similar with brains as well. We use another program and I think I would routinely start the day by switching it off because the number of times it told me that there's an unfolded aorta or something that's completely irrelevant to any clinical decision that needs to be made is very you know at the moment it's not very useful to me some people might use it but I'm quite a high volume fast reporter and me having to look at the number of things that's identified with a confidence interval attached to it basically would slow me down a significant amount and make me highly inefficient in my day-to-day -day work. And this is a radiologist who did say his initial impression of artificial intelligence was positive. We did see this theme quite a lot, the power of the synergy between human and machines. <clears throat> Um, and I think this feeds into the hope that the clinicians felt about the future. So I mean, in my mind, it is faster and more accurate, particularly in the field that I will work in. If I can get a radiologist assisted by an AI together, you kind of get the potential gold standard. At the moment, what I'm imagining is where would they could work together to get the best outcome. But there is this stuff too, like a radiologist is human. And when you have a bad sleep, like we all have those days, we're not on the ball as we should be for like whatever reason, whatever thing that goes on in the background, like you've got a sick kid at home or a parent that you're worried about. And so the eye is almost there like a safety net. It's like that extra little bit of backup that supports you when you can miss something. So moving on to accountability and responsibility, this was a really strong theme about who's actually responsible in the scenario that the AI makes a mistake. My concern is firstly, what is AI? Who will be responsible for the decisions taken by this automated process, whatever that might be? And who will be medically responsible if it's used in the health industry? And then who is accountable but everyone has that concern of who's accountable. You know, if we're doing the dual reading, it's just the radiologist and the program has the responsibility, or is it the institution that's making you use the AI as an adjunct to clinical practice, or is it the company who wants to use the AI? There were a reasonable amount of reservations and scepticism. So there was concern about um, people becoming over-reliant on an artificial intelligence um, program to do their work and potentially losing their uh, very highly subspecialized skills. I was sort of thinking, I guess, if you in any industry, whether it's just general life as well, if you rely on computers so much, then there's always that possibility that things can go wrong and how to fix it and everything. So I guess it's good in a way that it'll assist us, but then there's also that sort of negative aspect that we have to think about sort of not relying on it too much. One of the challenges is at the moment, we do have humans with good experience, but if we relinquish more and more of that expertise to an algorithm, then there'll be a crossover point where there'll be no humans with enough experience to veto the AI. So we get to a point when we are the slaves to the AI because no one has the knowledge or expertise to say, hey, that AI is wrong. And that um, was a very experienced radiologist saying that, similarly, who was excited about the concept. Um, and there were, of course, issues about safety. So some concern would be about accuracy and how to maintain quality control as well. The issue about inclusion and diversity was raised and the concern that this would not be generalizable to all Australians. So I think one of the big challenges with AI is about its inclusiveness and diversity and what are the trainings that it's been based on? Is it a true representation of the Australian breast screening population? So yeah, they're the kind of ethical ethics challenges. So in summary, um, there was this optimism, um, but in contrast to their lived experience with AI, and so far their experiences have been disappointing at best and frustrating at worst. Um, breast screen health professionals' perspectives range from enthusiastic to hesitant on the use of AI for mammography with concerns for safety, accountability and responsibility. The concept of responsibility had some subtle nuances and that related to the maintenance of professionalism and duty of care towards patients. And there were concerns about safety and responsibility raised, specifically about data safety and the inclusiveness of a diverse society. 
I'd like to say a huge thank you to the 27 participants who volunteered their time for us. Um, the Medical Research Futures Fund who funded this project, Dr. Prabhathi Pasanaki has been uh, crucial in running, facilitating the project as the other researcher on this. Um, the BREAKS team, but mostly uh, Associate Professor Helen Fraser, who's the PI of the project, and Katrina Kanuki, who's been the uh, manager of the project. Dr. Mahu Amar Amari helped with the initial development of the project and Associate Professor Louise Keogh from the School of Global uh, Health at um, the University of Melbourne helped with the development of the plan as well. Uh, thanks so much for your time.